This is the second video of the core practical called Investigating Inks, and we're going to look at the process of distillation. The first process in this core practical is chromatography, and if you haven't already seen that and want to uh, revise chromatography, then you can click the link below in the description. Distillation is another process that scientists can use to separate a mixture. In our mixture that we're going to separate, we've got ink and water mixed together, and we're going to separate the water from the ink. So we're not going to separate the individual chemicals that are in the ink, like we did for chromatography, but we're going to separate our ink and water mixture. The equipment that we use for distillation is called a still, and I've got one set up over here. Now this is not what the equipment looks like for your core practical, mostly because it contains quite a lot of expensive glassware that very few science departments are able to just give out for students to do a core practical. So I'll demonstrate distillation with this still setup, and then I will do it afterwards with the core practical setup. At this point, it's important to distinguish between the two different types of distillation processes. The first type of distillation is simple distillation, and this is what we're going to do here. Simple distillation separates a solute from a solvent, or to put it another way, separates something dissolved in something else. So apart from separating ink and water mixtures, simple distillation could also be used to separate water from salt water. The second type of distillation process is called fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is very, very similar to simple distillation, but it is used to separate a mixture of liquids, like for example, all of the liquids that are in crude oil, or separating alcohol from water when making alcoholic beverages like whiskey and vodka. The still for fractional distillation has got one extra piece of equipment in it, and that is a fractionating column that goes between this round bottom flask here and this thing here called a condenser, which I'll talk about later on. So for simple distillation, we put the mixture ready to be separated in something called a round bottom flask. It's called a round bottom flask because the bottom of the flask is round. The reason why we use a round bottom flask is so that we get even heat distribution into the mixture when I put the Bunsen burner underneath it. In this round bottom flask, we have got our ink and water mixture, and we've also got something called anti-bumping granules, which are these here. Now, these small solid granules don't help to separate the mixture and they don't interfere with the ink or water in any way. They're purely there as a safety feature. Anti-bumping granules basically just allow for a smoother boiling of our mixture and it's less likely to overboil and we get or get something that's called flash boiling. Up from the round bottom flask, we've got this side arm coming off here, and then the top is, has got a bung with a thermometer in it as well. So the bung is to stop anything from escaping, turning into a gas and escaping. And the thermometer, the bulb of thermometer, needs to be level with the side arm. What's going to happen is when this Bunsen burner is put underneath the mixture, it's going to boil the water, turn the water into steam. So we want to be able to record the temperature of the steam as it's starting to exit the flask. If it gets too hot, I can then turn the Bunsen burner down or move it away to adjust the heat. Further along the sidearm, we've got this piece of equipment here, which is called the condenser. This type of condenser is called a Liebig condenser, and it's basically a tube within a tube. The inner tube is where the steam will come in from this top here. The outer tube has got these rubber connections to it, and they're also connected to the cold water tap. When the cold water tap is switched on, it's really important that the rubber tubing, we connect them the right way round. The cold water tap is connected to the bottom rubber tube, and then the top rubber tube just feeds into the sink. That's just not connected to anything. That's just ready to go down the sink. So we essentially have a jacket of cold water going around that inner tube. 
Now, the reason why they have to be that way round is because we want to force the water and use the pressure from the tap to force the water to go uphill. If we did it the wrong way round and we connected the top tube to the cold water tap, and we just let the water trickle downhill, then we could get some air bubbles or some areas in that outer tube that wasn't uh, filling up with cold water. I'm gonna turn the tap on now and you're gonna see how it fills up. At the other end of the condenser is where we're going to collect the water after it's distilled over. So I'm gonna need a flask or a beaker to collect the water as it comes over. Now it's important that we keep the distillation still an open system. And by that, I mean we don't fix this or connect it to this end of the condenser like we have here. The reason for that is if we was to put a bung or a cork in this end of the condenser, then we would create a closed system. And if we create a gas in a closed system by boiling, then that could lead to a dangerous buildup of pressure and the glassware could explode on us. So we're gonna put this beaker underneath the, to catch the drips. We might get some of the steam able to escape and be lost to the atmosphere, but that's not too bad considering the alternative using a closed system, you might end up with a face full of hot glass. I'm about ready to start the distillation process now, so I'm gonna put some eye protection on. To get the Bunsen burner ready to start distilling, I'm gonna turn the air hole about halfway so we get a nice blue flame. I don't want it roaring because that's possibly gonna boil the mixture a bit too quickly and it's gonna be harder to control. I'm then gonna carefully slide the Bunsen burner underneath our round bottom flask. And now we wait until the mixture starts to boil. So now the temperature at the top there has got up to very nearly 100 degrees, meaning the steam at the top here is very nearly 100 degrees. I'm just gonna move the Bunsen burner away now because I don't want this to overboil. Now you can see that some of the steam is starting to condense at the top here because it's further away from the heat and it's starting to drip back down into the mixture. And as you can look around here, if I just move the Bunsen burner out of the way a little bit, you can see even more condensation forming on the inside of the condenser, which is exactly what we want. At the moment, we haven't made enough to be able to drip all the way down, but we've got something just starting to make its way down. Now, unfortunately, because this piece of apparatus has been used before, uh, there are little bits of ink around, so it's not nice and clear and colourless like we would expect the water to be. I'm just going to keep giving it a few doses of heat until we can get the water actually starting to drip at the other end of the condenser. Okay, we seem to have made quite a bit of water there on the other side, so I'll just turn the Bunsen off now for a second. And if I just show you, what was collected in that beaker, we've got colorless water here in this beaker. And so that's how we know we've been successful in separating the ink and water mixture. This water was once with the ink here, and then we boiled the water, it come up here, went down the condenser, condensed in the condenser, and then dripped down as colorless water. So that's how I would do distillation on a mixture of ink and water. But for the core practical, we don't use a round bottom flask and we don't use a Liebig condenser. The still that you will use to separate the ink and water mixture will look something a little bit like this. You'll have your ink and water mixture with some anti-bumping granules in a conical flask rather than a round bottom flask. And that's gonna be on a gauze and a tripod. For extra safety, I'm going to clamp the conical flask just to make sure that it's not gonna fall off during the distillation process. And then you're going to have a bung that's gonna be put into the conical flask, which has got a thermometer coming through so we can control the temperature and also a delivery tube that goes around like this. Instead of a condenser, the delivery tube is gonna feed into this boiling tube, which is currently sitting in an ice bath. And the ice bath is going to act as our condenser. Now, a common mistake 
that I see people make when they are setting this up is they have the bottom of that delivery tube right at the bottom of the boiling tube like that. Do not do that when you're setting up this as a still. Make sure you've got a nice long drop from the top of the delivery tube to the bottom of the boiling tube. Because remember, we want a nice open system that's gonna allow gas to escape if it really needs to. Now, if we think about comparing this still to the other one, the round bottom flask, okay, we're not gonna have as even heat distribution. That's not gonna affect the separation. The big thing that's gonna affect the separation is that we don't have a condenser between where we're heating the mixture and where we're collecting the water distilling over. Without that piece of equipment, we are going to expect to lose quite a lot of the water that we're trying to distill over to the surrounding atmosphere. So if we was to evaluate this piece of apparatus, we would say that one of the big things that's missing from here and a way to improve it is to include a condenser in this part of the still. But anyway, we're gonna heat it up. We're gonna heat this up. We're gonna put the Bunsen burner again on a blue flame, not a roaring flame. Blue flame's easy to control. I'm also going to adjust the gas level as well. So rather than being fully on, I'm just gonna turn the gas tap so it is halfway between off and on. And um, if we keep it on the orange flame, you can see what effect that has on the orange flame. It just brings the flame down a little bit. Again, it just makes the flame a little bit easier to control. Okay, gas tap doesn't just have on off settings. You can have a half setting for a smaller flame. So I will turn the air hole now so it is a blue flame. And we will put the blue flame underneath the mixture. If it gets too hot, then I can quite easily slide my Bunsen burner out and stick it on a safety flame while I'm waiting. If it then needs heating up again, put it back onto the blue flame and slide it back under. It's a good idea to keep your hands on the safety mat as well, just to keep it steady. So this can take a little bit of time to uh, heat up. Again, through the magic of video editing, you're gonna see it happen much faster. temperature on the thermometer at the moment, so the temperature at the top of the conical flask is about 60 degrees Celsius and already I can start to see some condensation forming on the top of the conical flask and also on the bulb of the, th of the thermometer and so it's just starting to drip back down into the mixture. Remember we're looking for the temperature at the top of the conical flask to be at about 100 degrees. So it's just starting to come up now and you can see that it's just in danger of starting to overboil. So I'm definitely gonna take that Bunsen burner away now. We can see that the water is just coming across there now. Let's turn that off for a minute because I'm not gonna need any more. We can definitely see that we've got condensation here in the tube and the condensation is now just starting to drip out into the boiling tube here. If I was to keep heating it up, then we would keep producing more and more water and eventually all of the water would come over to the other side and we would leave just the ink left in the conical flask. So now you should know what distillation is and how to set up distillation in terms of using a Liebe condenser and also how to do it as part of the core practical. The final bit is to know how distillation achieves this separation. Distillation uses the fact that different chemicals have different boiling points in order to separate them. In the case of ink and water, the water has the lower boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius. So imagine you could see the molecules of ink and water in the flask being heated. There would of course be millions of them, but we're just gonna focus on one single water molecule. Hello. As the mixture is heated, the water molecule is going to gain more and more energy. 
As the water molecule gains more energy, it is able to move faster. Eventually, the water molecule will have enough energy to be able to overcome the forces that are between it and the other water molecules and ink molecules trying to stick them together. The movement of this water molecule will change from just being able to slide over other molecules to being able to fly up and away from the rest of the mixture. It will become a gas molecule, or steam as we normally call water as a gas. The water molecule has nowhere to go but round the tube and into the test tube. Because the test tube is cold, the heat energy from the water molecule will move away towards the cold ice we are effectively taking away the energy that we gave it before. The water molecule therefore loses energy here and its movement will go back to clumping together with other water molecules and just being able to slide about over each other. We say that the water has now condensed back to a liquid.